As the Beatles' magical mystery tour was going to air on BBC One, in black and white initially, an enigmatic young singer-songwriter was notching up his fifth British hit in not much more than a year. With outings like Matthew and Son and I'm Gonna Get Me a Gun, dark and handsome Cat Stevens was a major pop star of 1967. Of course, that was not his real name, and it would not be his last. Born Stephen Dimitri Giorgio of Greek Cypriot and Swedish ancestry, he grew up over his parents' Moulin Rouge restaurant on Shaftesbury Avenue near Piccadilly Circus in London, a short walk from the Denmark Street hub of studios, rehearsal rooms, music shops and publishers. Fascinated by songwriting and besotted by Dylan, Paul Simon, Nina Simone, Leadbelly and George Gershwin, he wanted to establish a musical career and began to perform originally under the stage name Steve Adams. He went with Cat Stevens in part because a girlfriend said he had eyes like a cat, but mainly because, as he said, I couldn't imagine anyone going to the record shop and asking for that Stephen Dimitri Giorgio album. And in England, and I was sure in America, they loved animals. Now, Cat not only had a string of his own hits, but he penned Here Comes My Baby for the Tremolos and the timeless The First Cut Is The Deepest, which has been a UK hit for four different artists. He was a high-flying pop star until 1968 when his world collapsed. Early that year, at age 19, he came down with tuberculosis and a collapsed lung and nearly died. During his slow recovery, he questioned his life beliefs, he took up meditation, read about religion, became a vegetarian and embraced a spirituality that had not previously occurred to him. When he returned to the public eye in 1970, signed to Island Records, it was that life-changing experience that was shaping his music. And that is where we come in on the first part of our Cat Stevens concert doubleheader tonight. The stark, plaintive, pared-back Monobone Jacon album gave him a return hit with Lady Dabanville, a song with a madrigal sound not previously heard on radio. There was an introspective singer-songwriter boom or movement about to happen and Cat Stevens was poised to be one of its leaders. Okay. The 1971 Tea for the Tillerman album, which he painted the cover of himself, broke him globally, going gold on both sides of the Atlantic. Driving it were two indelible hits which were about to see him perform. The cautionary tale, Wild World, and the compelling father and son, which actually predated his illness. Cat originally wrote it as part of a proposed musical project with actor Nigel Hawthorne called Revolutia, which was set during the Russian Revolution and concerned a boy who wanted to join the revolution against the wishes of his father. The project lapsed as he was hospitalised, but when it finally appeared in the 70s, it sounded so absolutely in tune with its own times. And like Harry Chapin's Cats in the Cradle and Mike and the Mechanics' The Living Years, has become a defining song about the eternal nature of parent-child relationships. So we start with an intimate small studio acoustic concert at the time of Tea for the Tiller Man, with Cat very much on the road to find out, fitting into his new persona. Then we move on five years to the 1976 Earth Tour, his last concert jaunt through North America. As Magic Cat, he assembled an ambitious and quite groundbreaking production involving live magicians, synchronised film projection and a large innovative stage set. By then, he had a massively successful body of work to draw upon, including the albums Teaser and the Fire Cat, Catch Bullet 4, Foreigner, Buddha in the Chocolate Box and Numbers. So he drew upon it and then he took his leave from popular music, effectively forever. Released on CD and DVD in 2004, with the blessing of the man now known as Yusuf Islam, this quite precious complete concert showcases Cat Stevens at the peak of his powers, even though he was then questioning his life, his fame, and his desire to perpetuate it as it was. 
Magic Hat presented the astonishingly adept singer-songwriter with three backing vocalists and a seven-piece band, including master guitarist Alan Davies, keyboard master Jean Rossell and drummer Jerry Conway. His set included Peace Train, Oh Very Young, The Wind, Where Do The Children Play, Moon Shadow, Sam Cooke's Another Saturday Night, Sad Lisa, Banapple Gas and Tuesday's Dead. It will bring to an end an evocative, inspiring and wonderfully satisfying look at one of the absolute superstars of the 1970s and one of the most enduring musical entities of the 20th century, Cat Stevens. Get ready to have it sweep over you in lustrous waves.